There is something so cozy about homemaking in the winter time. You know, I used to really struggle in the winter season. I was just constantly looking forward to spring and I wanted the snow to go away, but I've just learned that either, either I can embrace it and still have joy <laughs> or, you know, I can be miserable for three months. And, you know, I have just, the older I get, the more and more I've decided to choose joy no matter what the circumstances are. And there really are some beautiful things about the winter season that I've just realized it's a time for home, it's a time for rest, it's a time for togetherness as a family. And today, I'm just gonna take you along with me as I do some homemaking in my kitchen particularly. There's a lot of things that we as homemakers have to do and manage. And one of those things is just stewarding our homes well and our resources and what we have and trying not to be wasteful and so that's what today is about i'm gonna kind of show you guys uh, what i've been up to in my kitchen and take you along with me and cook some cozy meals with you along the way so i hope you'll stay tuned um, as we get started i'm gonna start off today with a cozy breakfast for my boys and you can see here we actually cooked a big ham this week um, it was given to us for Christmas and we finally decided to to make the ham and I've got all this leftover ham that I've been trying to use up so this is the last of it and I'm gonna cook it up in some butter there's nothing better than ham cooked in butter on the stovetop and in a cast iron pan the sizzle the smell it's just it's everything so I'm I'm just cooking that up for my boys. They love ham. And I'm also going to just uh, scramble up some eggs as well and pour those eggs over the ham along with some shredded cheese. I'm trying to go through a lot of what we have in the fridge to make room for this big Costco haul. And this should fill my boys up. This is a really nice hearty breakfast. It'll fill them up uh, for a while anyways, <laughs> until they come back hungry again. Um, but I just like to do this on days where I have big projects planned, something that's going to take me a lot of time. Um, I don't want them coming into the kitchen constantly asking for food, and so this is a great choice for today. Um, I also like to get a head start on dinner time, so that's something I'm going to do as well after we eat breakfast. And by the way, while I do these breakfast dishes, I don't know if you can see the new light fixture above the sink. I'm already on a different light fixture. I know last time I was chatting with you guys, I had been I tried out a, a lantern that just really seemed too heavy in this space. Now I've got a different light up there. I'm trying that out. This one was actually very affordable. I'll link it for you guys if you're interested. I really love it. I think it's cute here, but I'm still kind of trying it out. So let me know what you guys think. But of course, there's so much in this video that you guys don't see uh, all the homeschooling all over the table and, you know, the, the history lesson that we did and <laughs> kids running through constantly. I never want to portray this perfect, you know, life. It's not that at all. That's usually why uh, the sound is muted and you guys are just listening to music because it's very loud. Someone's usually banging on the piano and kids are running around, but... I did want to mention something quickly. I love to cook with cast iron. I've talked about it a lot in other videos and I got this little kit off of Amazon that came with all these different things for cleaning cast iron. One of them is this plastic tool that you can use to scrape your cast iron. I, I really, particularly when you cook eggs, um, is when it comes in handy, but this uh, little chain scrubber is also very handy. Um, if you need to get off those stuck on bits and pieces. And um, if you're looking to invest in some cast iron, I always suggest searching antique stores for some of the older pieces that are much thinner and more lightweight. This particular piece is uh, by Wagner. I've always wanted to invest in a Griswold cast iron pan. They are very nice, very smooth, but they're very expensive at antique stores, usually $85 to $100 for a 12-inch pan, at least where I live. So, But you can just see how lightweight this Wagner is. It's really smooth, almost nonstick. And anyways, I, I wanted to share those tips with you. 
um, if you're looking for you know, a, a non-toxic option for cookware, cast iron is the way to go. All right, so I'm going to get started on dinner now for tonight, and that way I don't have to worry about it. It's not, you know, hanging over my head. I'm not thinking about it all afternoon as I work on cleaning out the pantry. So I'm just going to start by shredding the rest of this cheese. I started shredding it for the eggs, so I just figured, hey, the dishes are already dirty. Let's just shred the rest of it up and get it all ready for pork nachos tonight. So... I'm going to tell you how I made those in just a moment, uh, but before I start talking about the pork, I really want to share this salsa recipe with you guys. It is our family's favorite. My boys love this salsa. It's delicious. It's a corn and black bean salsa. So I just put a bag of frozen corn, um, a can of black beans um, into a bowl. I'm going to do about a half a cup of chopped red onion. I try to chop it finely because some of my boys don't like the onion but most of them don't even they, they just gobble it up also um, I'm going to chop up roughly three Roma tomatoes um, and I think I did a little bit more than that actually and then about a half a cup of chopped cilantro so <laughs> lots of good stuff now for the seasoning, I'm doing a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and you can use actually the juice of a lime for this. You don't have to use lime essential oil. I don't have a lime at the moment, but I've done both. I have just lime essential oil, so I'm just going to do... Um, you know, two or three, four drops, whatever you think it needs, you can try it and see um, how it tastes. Uh, but like I said, the juice of a lime is perfectly fine if, if you don't have any lime essential oil. Now I'm going to stir all of these ingredients up and you can just see how beautiful this is. And this might seem like more of a summertime dish and it totally is, you know, but Every once in a while, it's just nice to have something fresh in the middle of winter time. You know, you don't want to be constantly eating heavy comfort foods. And this was just, oh, it was so delicious. And I just uh, add a couple tablespoons of honey as well for some sweetness. And again, you can eyeball this. You can taste it if you want it to taste more like garlic. You can add more garlic. If you want more lime juice, add that. The longer it sits, the more delicious it gets. And actually, um, you can also add a couple of avocados to this salad. I'm going to do that closer to when we make dinner just because I didn't add the lime juice. I don't want my avocado to get brown. Um, so I'm gonna add that later. But anyways, I just thought I'd share this salsa with you guys. It's so, so good. Okay, now moving on to the meat. I have like a two to three pound pork shoulder here. Pork shoulder is very affordable, but it does have a lot of fat. So if you want to, you can remove the excess fat around the cut of meat you have. But what I like to do is um, cut the meat into chunks so that I'm able to remove a little bit more fat. And of course, you can remove more of this fat later on. I'll show you. Um, but basically, I am going to season this meat. We're going to do nachos tonight. So I'm going to use a blend of seasonings that includes garlic, onion, cumin, chili powder, some paprika, salt, pepper, um, and I am just going to rub the meat with these seasonings. And then what I will do is brown the meat in some olive oil in my Dutch oven. And I'll get it nice and brown on the outside. And after I have browned the meat, I will go ahead and chop up an onion and add an onion to the meat kind of just, you know, shoving the pieces down and nestling the onion all around the meat. And then I'll add about a cup or so of vegetable broth. You don't want the pork fully submerged. You just kind of want to put some liquid into your Dutch oven. Then you're going to bring that broth to a simmer and you can shut it off and put the lid on your Dutch oven and put it in the oven at 325. And you want to cook it for... For, for this amount of meat, I think I cooked mine for about two hours. Essentially, you just, you want to check it towards the end and you want to make sure that the meat just kind of falls apart when you poke it with a fork. If it's not falling apart, it's not tender enough yet, you want to keep cooking it. So 
that's what I did here and this is gonna make for some delicious pork nachos later and I'll show you what I do with the meat once it's done cooking all right so the boys are fed homeschool's done I've got dinner in the oven it's prepping and now I just kind of like to do a couple of things around the house get everything I don't know about you guys before I start in on a project I want the rest of the home to sort of be tidy do you guys ever feel that way <laughs> It's like a little bit overwhelming when other parts of the home are a wreck and I start on another project So I just kind of like to tidy things up wipe down the table You know get things clean and then I think I had yep, I have a, a load of laundry That I was I wanted to get uh, folded as well And I just kind of walk around the house. I'm always picking up the house constantly people ask like what are your tips for a tidy home? and it's just you know, you just don't let it pile up. You're constantly just picking things up. That ottoman right there next to me is full of toys. And I would highly suggest to young moms have a place in your living room where you can just throw toys. You can get rid of them quickly and it just feels good to kind of tidy up. Um, usually we do it in the evenings before bed. I do it during this time of day as well. But you can see here now that the pork, I've pulled it out of the oven. It's been cooking. I know it didn't look like it, but two hours did go by during that time of cleaning and uh, just finishing up some other things that we had. We had a history lesson, but you can see that the pork is kind of falling apart here. So what I'm going to do is move the pork onto a cutting board and I'm just going to start shredding it with two forks. Um, I would use my hands but you can see it's very hot and whenever you see large pieces of fat you can always kind of put those to the side but basically this meat just falls apart. It's tender, it's delicious, it was so flavorful. The boys kept walking by and stealing little pieces. <laughs> Um, but this is just so good you guys it's so delicious so juicy you could use the same recipe and do like barbecue pork there's all kinds of variations with the seasonings but this is how I cook pork shoulder and I'm just gonna put it right back into my Dutch oven right back into the juices so that it can be really flavorful and um, that way it's all ready to go nice and juicy for nachos later. So I will show you how I assemble the nachos later on, but now dinner is ready to go and it just feels great. All right guys, time to get started on the project that I have been, I, you know, I've been, I've been putting this off. I have needed to do this since Christmas. But, you know, sometimes we just, we have to roll up our sleeves as homemakers and just do the things that we don't necessarily want to enjoy or enjoy doing. Um, but it's important. It's all a part of the job. And, you know, I try to just shift my focus and remember that this is a way that I can serve my family. And this is a way that I can steward our home well. And so you really just have to continue to you know, shift your focus upward rather than inward. And the fact that you are, you know, taking inventory and trying to stock up your home with healthy ingredients, that, it, that that's, that's serving the ones that you love. And so that's what we're going to do today. So I've just got like random bags that I need to combine, ingredients I need to combine. I've got some flour here uh, that I've grabbed from Walmart because we haven't been able to get to Costco. That's where I usually purchase flour. Um, so I'm just throwing those into the canister that's on my countertop. That's where I like to keep flour since I'm making sourdough bread so often. It's nice to keep it handy. And I'm just going to start wiping down these canisters as well. But you can see this area over where we keep our Berkey. I have a lot of extra ingredients over here as well. And this is really what I've been meaning to tackle for a long time now. There are some ingredients in these canisters that are probably expired. And yes, there you have it. Organic coconut sugar <laughs> expired in 22. I know, this is sad. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> actually, we uh, used up a lot of that coconut sugar for some homemade sugar scrubs for our, for our hands and our feet. Uh, this Christmas, we gave away some homemade gifts. So it did come in handy, but it's time to get rid of it. So I'm just going to kind of go through these ingredients, see what has expired, and see what I can replace. Um, and and so here we go. 
All right, so because I am gluten-free, I keep a lot of random ingredients on hand, like coconut flour and almond flour, and um, we try to eat somewhat healthy, so this coconut sugar, uh, honestly, it's something that I use once in a while, but not often. Um, we do use cane sugar, which I know is, you know, horrible. <laughs> I try as often as possible to replace sugar with honey, or maple syrup that, you know, at least natural alternatives um, than something that's so processed. But you know, everybody wants to make brownies or cookies every once in a while, everything in moderation. So I am just kind of going through all of these ingredients, cleaning out the canisters, trying to figure out what I have, what I need, and I'm making notes along the way and just writing down what I'm low on, what I need more of, because Costco is the place where I want to stock up on it. I know I can get sugar, organic sugar there for a really great price. Uh, like I said, I get, they sell a large bag of gluten-free flour. I think it's by Namaste. It's a really good one. Uh, a lot of you guys ask what gluten-free flours I use. And honestly, the Walmart brand is really great. I think I like it more than like Pillsbury or some of the other name brands. Um, but the Namaste brand from Costco is awesome as well. So I'm just making notes as I clean these canisters out and kind of writing down, you know, what it is that we need for our home. And that way, when we go to Costco, I'm a little bit more prepared <laughs> and I just, I'm not feeling like, wow, I have no idea what we need and what we don't need. So it's just, you know, it's a good way to sort of steward well. So I don't know if you guys notice, I have some uh, like dry erase stickers on the bottoms of these lids so I can write the expiration dates on the bottom of the lids. And that way, even though I throw the bag out, I can still keep track of these ingredients um, and they look a little bit prettier on my shelf and they save room in my pantry. And so just a little tip for you, you can buy those labels online. I'll add a link for you guys if you're interested, but they're really helpful, just the dry erase, or you can get some that are you know, uh, I think for chalk as well. Um, but I'm just cleaning off these shelves. I have a whole video on my YouTube channel about this DIY like pantry area situation. It was just wasted space in our kitchen. And so um, it's gone through quite the transformation over the years. And uh, at first it was just some brackets with some wooden shelves, but we added some beadboard recently and some corbels and it's really a beautiful little spot. Uh, the, the smaller canisters have baking soda and baking powder. The canister straight ahead has coffee that we grind. Uh, we have a coffee grinder. And so it's just so delicious um, when you have freshly ground coffee. And then I'm just filling the other canisters with brown sugar, regular sugar, and I believe the last one is coconut flour. Now I do have some small canisters here with chia seed and flax seed. So, so I regret not having put those labels under these lids. That's why you need the labels because I don't know how old this stuff is, but I'm gonna hang on to the chia seeds. They are great for making your own like jam because it's a, it, they're great for thickening. Um, but the flax seed, I'm gonna get rid of. It says it only has like a year lifespan and I know almost for a fact that that is expired. This is some yeast, that instant yeast that I haven't used in forever because we do sourdough so often now. So I'm gonna get rid of that as well and just wash these jars out. I also had three different cocoa powders in my pantry. This is horrible. <laughs> How does this end up happening? I think just, we do a lot of grocery pickups with little boys, with having little children. It's easy for me to just go do a pickup. And I think some things, sometimes things are added to the order. Um, that I don't necessarily need, but I'm just combining all of these uh, cocoa powders into this one jar. And yes, I realize that this these are two different types of cocoa powder. One is darker than the other, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. In the wintertime, we mostly use this for making hot cocoa, so it's all going to be good. The different colors, I know that you know, they might bother some people, but it's all, it's fine. So next I'm going to move on and kind of tidy up the top of my pantry. I keep my onions up here, my potatoes, extra produce, and the onions make uh, quite a mess sometimes. And so I'm going to add some brown paper bags to the bottom of this basket just to help with that. And then just continue to kind of clean out these canisters, this large one I use for freshly milled flour, and uh, I'm just going to wash that out as well. 
And then I just like to check all of my oils, my vinegars, this giant coconut oil that I'm holding is from Costco. It's a great price there. I know I'm running low on that. I think it lasted us almost a year. Uh, and then just checking to see what else we need. I'm low on avocado oil, which is great for cooking with cast iron. I'm low on olive oil. So I'm just writing these things down and kind of just making sure that um, I'm aware of everything that we need for our home. I'm going to continue working through this pantry. Again, just going through and making sure that um, I write down everything that we need. I can see here that I'm all out of um, our natural food coloring. This is something that I actually, I think I ordered this online, but this is a great, I just thought I would share it with you. Um, it's by Watkins and there's no artificial dyes. I'm running low on those. I know that for a fact. Um, the just birthday candles, things like that. Just going through everything, wiping down my pantry, checking my canned goods, making sure that um, I know for a fact I get a uh, the my tomato sauce, organic tomato sauce, and uh, canned tomatoes at Costco. So I'm gonna need those. I'm low on a couple other items as well uh, that I get from Costco. So again, I'm just kind of going through all of these shelves and taking inventory and I think every homemaker can sort of relate to that. I'm also taking a look at my spice cabinet and just combining spices that I seem to have doubles of and uh, just taking notes and seeing what I need more of, what I'm low on. This is all a part of a homemaker's job and it's, you know, one that uh, I take seriously and I think that we can save a lot of money if we are stewarding our homes well. Um, after I take out this trash, I'm going to finish up the dishes, sort of tidy up the kitchen, and then I'm going to show you how I kind of pull dinner together. So I'm just taking these uh, tortilla chips that uh, I purchased at Walmart and I'm just uh, spreading them out on a sheet tray. It's a very simple, easy meal. I'm going to take that cheese that I shredded earlier and just put that all over the top of the nachos. One tray feeds our family of six. There's usually a little bit left over. There was in this case. I know that as my boys grow older, it'll probably be two or three sheets of nachos that I'll have to make. Not looking forward to those days. Um, but that's uh, what I did. And then I'm going to take that pork that I shredded earlier and I'm just going to pile that up all over the top of these nachos. I have the oven preheating at 400 degrees. And I'm just going to take the entire sheet tray of nachos and put that into a 400 degree oven for about just, just, you just want, really want the cheese to melt and the pork to warm up. That's all you're looking for. So um, I think our oven was still preheating when I stuck these in. So I think the, the nachos were in there for like 10 minutes maybe. It might not even take that long. Every oven is different. Um, but now I'm going to add some chopped avocado into my salsa. Um, and it just adds delicious texture and flavor. We love avocado. My boys love guacamole. <laughs> so we, we go through a lot of avocado. I'm going to stir that up and then... I will go ahead and pull my nachos out of the oven. They look absolutely delicious and they were, oh my goodness, I wish you guys could try these. The meat was tender and just packed with flavor and juicy and the cheese, oh my goodness. I drizzled the whole top of these nachos with some sour cream that I just added a little bit of lime essential oil to and a little bit of garlic. So, oh, oh and just a little bit of water so I could kind of thin it out a little bit before spreading it all over the nachos and then we serve this up just by using some tongs and I just kind of grab a chunk <laughs> you can see how cheesy and delicious these are and I just pile some onto a plate and then all of my boys wanted the salsa piled on top they love this salsa it's sweet it's savory it's so good it has so much flavor and I'll just pile that all over the top of the nachos and you guys are just going to have to try this meal. It's easy, it's delicious, it's flavorful, um, fresh. And anyways, that's what we had for dinner. 
Well, thank you guys so much for watching today. Thank you for coming along with me as I manage my home. I hope that maybe you learned something today or were inspired in some way. I know that I'm always learning from you guys. I love reading your comments. Please leave me a comment below. I love hearing about your ideas and what you do uh, as a homemaker. We can all learn from each other and I just think that that's so wonderful. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching and I will see you all next time. All right guys, bye-bye.